And this is one of the things that's so incredibly infuriating with people like AOC that are trying to detract attention away from the abortions that Planned Parenthood does. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to mention that. They keep wanting to talk about the prenatal care, which, as we just saw, accounts for about 2% of what they actually do, as opposed to the 95% when it comes to abortions. And they want to talk about those things because they know that those play well with, with both sides of the aisle. And they just kind of pretend like Planned Parenthood's the only place anybody can go to get those. But then for every one adoption referral, they kill 81 babies. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is back in the news, and this time for saying a thing that makes no sense. So I, I guess apparently it is a day that ends in Y, ergo, AOC says something stupid. Let's watch. First and foremost, I don't want to hear a single person on this committee or outside of this committee talk <laughs> about what about uh, valuing life when they continue to uphold the death penalty, when they continue to support policies that disproportionately incarcerate and lead to the deaths of black men and people throughout this country, and uphold in a an absolutely unjust medical system that exists for profit that allows people to die because they can't afford to live. In addition to that, if we want to talk about Planned Parenthood, let's talk about how many lives Planned Parenthood this has saved. Good and how many babies have been born because of the prenatal care <laughs> provided by Planned Parenthood. And if you don't, if you don't believe it, and if you've never met a Planned Parenthood baby, oh, tell us I'm it, happy it. to let you know that I am one. And that my mother received and relied on prenatal care from Planned Parenthood when she was pregnant with me. Oh, man, that's why she's my favorite congressperson right there. AOC, I am a Planned Parenthood baby. Um, no, you're alive. You, you can't be a Planned Parenthood baby because you're, you're still living. You know, you're still drawing breath. You weren't violently pulled from your mother's womb and have a pair of scissors jabbed in the back of your head, which is what Planned Parenthood does. Uh, you're, you're still alive, ergo you are not a Planned Parenthood baby. That's that's not how that works. <laughs> Gosh, she just says the dumbest things. Uh, now, maybe she's just not smart enough to realize she's alive. Maybe she doesn't understand what the definition of being alive is, and, and clearly, considering her stance on abortion, she probably doesn't. So, because of that, maybe that's the reason she doesn't understand that her being alive means that she's not a Planned Parenthood baby, because maybe she doesn't know what alive is. You know, she doesn't understand what a garbage disposal is, so... Maybe she also doesn't understand what alive is. She also, you know, can't get basic economics or history despite having a degree in it. Uh, so, you know, th there's tons of reasons why this is the case. And also, I, I find it really funny that she's bragging about the prenatal care that her mom gave. Because what she's trying to do is she's trying to explain that she's a, a Planned Parenthood baby. Like she's a, a Gerber baby or something. Like a, a baby that partook of a certain product and thus she is the whatever product is baby. Um, yeah. Considering with you, there's got to be some significant brain damage, like maybe some oxygen not getting to the brain, maybe not some blood flow going on. I, I don't know that you're really a great case for the Planned Parenthood brand, darling. I mean, I, I, I just don't get that. Like, if you were trying to showcase, hey, I went to Planned Parenthood and I turned out like fine and stuff. And I, I just want to emphasize to everybody, everybody in this committee and outside this committee. Wouldn't that just be all the people? I mean, if, if you're going to have somebody that's going to be a poster child for something, you shouldn't pick the dumbest person you can find <laughs> and be like, I, I, my mom went to Planned Parenthood when she was pregnant with me and, and I turned out fine. I, gosh. And then she goes into this whole thing. It's a tired old argument. People on the abortion side of, of the debate have been using this forever. Basically, you're not allowed to be pro-life unless you're for all of the other things that I am for, whether it's connected to abortion or not. 
So unless you're uh, unless you're like uh, for prison reform and stuff, like you can't talk to me about Planned Parenthood. I don't know what in the world that has to do with abortion, but okay. Uh, if you were on the right, imagine trying to pull this trick with them. Look, you're not allowed to talk to me about anything regarding the environment or global warming or climate change or whatever you want to call it this week unless you agree with me on how long hunting season should be and the farm bill and urban pollution. All of those things, by the way, kind of connected to the environment in some ways. But I do find it funny that Democrats, primarily whose voter base resides in urban cities, um, urban locales, suburbs, that kind of thing, virtually their entire base resides in the places that pollute the most. I find that hysterical <laughs> on a number of, for a number of reasons. Uh, but you're looking out at, for example, farmland, rural country, they pollute way less per square mile than places like LA, New York, Chicago. I mean, the pollution levels there are just insane. And yet they're terrified that Republicans living out in Alabama are somehow harming the environment where we have, you know, 70% of our state is just trees. But yeah, we're, we're the ones that are bad for the environment. But that wouldn't work if we reversed it, right? I, I couldn't say to AOC, she'd never accept that premise. She is at least smart enough to not accept that. If I were to say to her, you're not allowed to talk to me about the Green New Deal or anything regarding global warming unless you agree with me on how long hunting season should be and that we should just get rid of cities and not have cities anymore because they're causing too much pollution. Like, you couldn't get away with that on the other side. Saying, unless you agree with me on things like gun control, you're not allowed to talk to me about anything kind of tangentially related to guns or, or even things that have nothing to do with guns, like the prison reform and the, abor and the abortion thing. Like, I don't see how that's connected at all. But nonetheless, this is what she, she tries to project on this. And what it all boils down to is she doesn't want to talk about the issue. And we'll get into that in a second. But I love one of the quotes in there. She's like, let's talk about how many lives Planned Parenthood has saved. Planned Parenthood is a medical organization that does not offer any life-saving treatments. None. Now, they do some preventative care. To their credit, they, they do a little bit of preventative care, and maybe some preventative care has saved lives, but there's absolutely no way to gauge that. And the truth is, that's not even the majority of what they do anyway. But when she says, let's just talk about all the lives that Planned Parenthood has saved, y'all, which is hilarious, she's uh, cultural appropriating my culture, Southern culture, by using the word y'all. But anyway, um... If Planned Parenthood provides no life-saving services and you want to talk about all the lives Planned Parenthood has saved, okay, let's talk about that. Give me a number. Give me a number. How many lives does Planned Parenthood save? They can't quantify it because Planned Parenthood doesn't offer any services that would save lives. They don't do anything like mammograms and pap smears and, and other things that people have tried to attribute to Planned Parenthood. They don't do any of those things. They don't do cancer screenings or anything like that. Oh, okay, AFC, you want to talk about that? Give me a number. How many, how many people does Planned Parenthood save? See, they don't want to give you a number because they don't know what it is. And with AOC, she doesn't even understand the concept of numbers. So she thinks you can just print as much money as you want and never run out. And that's not how math works. But prenatal care, that's fine. I don't know of a single conservative that is upset with Planned Parenthood for promoting prenatal care. And, and those services I don't have an issue with. In fact, if they just did prenatal care, I would be fine with them operating. I, I wouldn't have any animosity towards them whatsoever. And I don't like them getting federal funding, but that's because I don't like anything getting federal funding that is, you know, not directly related to the duties of government laid out in the Constitution. So I would be against it on libertarian grounds, but I would not object to them getting tax dollars other than the fact that I object to any outside medical organization receiving tax dollars for any reason. But if that weren't the issue, I wouldn't even have a problem with them getting tax money if all they did was prenatal care. That's not the issue. They act as though there's not a single other health care provider for women's health that does any prenatal care whatsoever, that we couldn't do this some other way. In fact, there was a bill proposed by Republicans back when they were controlling the House. They proposed a bill that said, We'll stop funding Planned Parenthood. But what we are going to do is we're going to use exactly the same amount of money. We're just going to transfer it to providers of things like prenatal care that don't also do abortions. 
to the Democrats, they didn't like that, not even a little bit. And so don't sit there and pretend like it's about the prenatal care. We could do things like prenatal care. We could do the other services that are completely harmless, offering contraceptives, that kind of thing. I'm not against any of those things that Planned Parenthood does. That's the only thing they should be getting federal money. But even if that were the case, I'd have no animosity towards them. There are clinics that do not do abortions that do those things that I'd be perfectly fine with and am perfectly fine with. They act as though that's the only place on planet Earth that you could go to get prenatal vitamins or contraceptives. It's the only place you can go to get it, and that's why we have to have them. No, you're supporting them because you like the abortion. That's, that's the problem with all of this. If they didn't do the abortion, that'd be fine. Planned Parenthood had the option a couple years ago when the Trump administration and Congress put more regulations on who wound up getting federal aid and they decided to take a cut in the amount of federal dollars they got rather than agree to the new restrictions that would require them to not do abortions at the clinics that received funding. They want to do the abortions. That's the problem. That's the issue that we have with them. We don't have any issues with the other stuff that they're doing, and we'd be perfectly fine with people getting those services. Just get them at somewhere that does not provide abortions as well. And one of the bigger issues is they act as though, and they want you they want you to laser focus on all of the services other than abortion that Planned Parenthood provides. But the problem is they're an abortion provider, and that's the primary thing that they do. And if you don't believe me, look at this report put together by Susan B. Anthony, but they're using Planned Parenthood's own reports to put this together. In 2018 through 2019, Abortions made up 95% of Planned Parenthood's pregnancy resolution services. So in other words, of the services that they offer for pregnant women, which last time I checked would be prenatal care, 95% of those people end in abortions. Only 5% or something else. They continue on. While prenatal services, miscarriage care, and adoption referrals accounted for only 2.7%, 0.6% in the case of miscarriage care, and 1.2% respectively. Okay, so when we go to prenatal services, miscarriages, and adoption referrals, even if you add all of those together, it doesn't even make up the other 5% other than the 95% that Planned Parenthood spends doing abortions. Now, those may be clinical, th those may be clinical abortions where a doctor actually goes in and performs an abortion. It may be a chemical abortion where they give you some kind of drug, but either way, 95% of their services, 95% of the pregnant women that come through their doors leave Planned Parenthood with an abortion. That's a fact, and that's according to their own numbers. It continues on. For every adoption referral in 2018 and 2019, Planned Parenthood performed nearly 81 abortions. Over the past 10 reported years, the ratio was approximately 137 abortions for every adoption referral. Think about that, guys. For every adoption that Planned Parenthood helps facilitate, and again, there are plenty of other organizations that help refer people for adoptions. I support financially a lot of them. Uh, one here in Alabama, Agape, which, which helps adoptions and helps women that need help finding somebody to give their baby to, they actually help people with that. There are plenty of organizations out there, both Christian and secular, that do that without offering abortions. When it comes to Planned Parenthood, for every one baby that they help find a home for in adoption, they kill 81 of them. And this is one of the things that's so incredibly infuriating with people like AOC that are trying to detract attention away from the abortions that Planned Parenthood does. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to mention that. They keep wanting to talk about the prenatal care, which, as we just saw, accounts for about 2% of what they actually do, as opposed to the 95% when it comes to abortions. And they want to talk about those things because they know that those play well with, with both sides of the aisle, and they just kind of pretend like Planned Parenthood's the only place anybody can go to get those. But then for every one adoption referral, they kill 81 babies. Let's see if we could apply this to Nazism. We would not say that for every 81 Jews that the Nazis killed, they did let one go, ergo, 
the Nazis are really good guys. Let, let's just focus on the, the Jews that the Nazis let go. And, and maybe they even gave him a sandwich on the way out. You know, those Nazis, they're, they're really not that bad. I mean, they only kill 81 Jews for every one that they let go. So you know, they're letting some of them go. No, we would not accept that with any other argument. If you're killing children, even if that figure were reversed, if they were doing 81 adoptions for every one abortion, they would still be an evil organization. The fact that they're doing one is one too many. But even if you ignore that, we wouldn't... It's so ridiculous to look at these people that are doing 81 abortions to every one adoption and be like, well, they're doing adoptions. They must not be all that bad, right, guys? No, this is an evil organization that is murdering children in their mother's womb. And you can try to sugarcoat that. You can try to get them to focus on other things as much as you want to. But at the end of the day, you cannot change that simple fact. And the thing is, the reason that AOC is bringing this up is because she knows that if you actually look at the facts of what Planned Parenthood does, even a lot of Democrats wouldn't agree with it. I mean, would you take your kid to a daycare that 95% of the kids that they keep, they, they kill five of them or, you know, they're fine, but they do kill 95% of the kids. W would you take your kid there? I think the answer would be no. I, I hope the answer would be no. But AOC brings up these stupid arguments that try to deflect and try to keep people from actually talking about it. Because you'll notice what she did first there. The first thing she did was she said, well, you're not even allowed to talk about it unless you agree with me on all these other policy issues. And then the second thing she did was try to talk about literally everything that Planned Parenthood does other than abortion. The reason that Democrats do that is because they know when they actually get into an honest discussion about the issue, they lose every single time without exception. They know that they look like monsters and they know that they're losing the argument and that's why they don't want to have the discussion in the per first place. They know if people actually knew the statistics, actually knew the truth, actually saw an abortion, that people would not side with them. And that's why they use these dumb little debate tactics because they know if they're going to win the argument, the only way they can do it is if they don't actually talk about the issue. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.